So we made it to the end of the year. It's been a long, tired year. Christmas is a week away. It's time to make nice Christmas dessert. Now, a long time ago, I spent a little time in California. My ex was from there. She worked a lot out there, and we sometimes got put up in the chateau for her work. The Chateau Marmont is like a legendary LA hotel. It's very old school fun place to stay. And they, they served something through room service that I had never really had. Just kind of heard of it. I knew it was a British thing, but it was this sticky toffee pudding. This little date cake that was covered in this caramelly toffee-like sauce. And it is maybe one of the best desserts ever. And I don't really like fruity things in cakes, but if done right and the dates are blended up so they sort of just add moisture to the cake, this is phenomenal. Thankfully, one of my new friends, Liv, for over from Live for Cake, she's the recipe I took for my Ferrero share cake. She has a sticky toffee pudding cake that's frosted, and I asked her if she has a traditional sticky toffee recipe, and she pointed me in the direction of who she based her recipe off of, which is this recipe from, let's see where it is, from rockrecipes.com. This is what I'm talking about. That's what it's supposed to look like. Maybe it doesn't look like much to you, but to me it looks like heaven. And so let's get started making it. I'm just gonna kind of follow their method. First thing we're gonna do is chop up dates. I have about eight ounces of dates here. They're pitted. If you never had them, they're good. They're sticky, they're sweet, they're kind of raisiny, but not. Kind of like an apricot, but not. It's good, it's a pleasant kind of uh, dried fruit flavor. So let's chop them up roughly. We're gonna blend them later, but we wanna get them chopped up because we're gonna throw them into water, boil them a little bit, and then we're gonna add baking soda, which is gonna help soften them so that we can puree them real nice. I'm just gonna get these into a pot. I have a cup and a half of water. I'm just gonna add that to the dates. So I'm just gonna get this onto the stove, bring it up to a boil, simmer it for like a minute or two. And then we're gonna add one teaspoon of baking soda. Let's measure that out now. So this is going to obviously help with the rise, but it's also going to help soften the dates when they're done cooking. Okay, so, so the dates are done. I'm gonna leave them on the stove and just kind of chill. Like I need them hot, I think, when I'm adding them to the batter. Um, I, hope, I hope I'm doing this right. So I have my oven preheating at 350 degrees. Gotta get a big bowl out. I have one and two thirds cup of flour. Can't wait for the Europeans to comment on the cup measuring system, but, but you know, I didn't invent it. So I just was born in America and this is how we did it. So maybe I'll switch over. For now, we're just gonna measure in cups and uh, I'm gonna add the flour and sift it. I don't think you have to, but I always like to. Now I need one and one half teaspoons of baking powder. 
Dry ingredients are mixed. I'm going to set that aside. Okay, I mean, in another bigger bowl, that was too big for the flour. Do the flour in a smaller bowl. This is where everything's gonna happen. So, first thing is I got my hand blender. Probably the last time I'm gonna use it. I kind of avoid big machinery for as long as I possible on this show, but people start sending me stuff and I'm probably gonna start using the cool stuff. But I just wanted to start the show off for the first few years using the basic stuff. So anything baking you can do with this and it's much cheaper. So what do we do first? We're going to cream the butter, the sugar, and the vanilla. So I have a third of a cup of butter here, it's softened. I have uh, one cup of firmly packed brown sugar. That goes in. And then two teaspoons of the vanilla extract. So now I'm going to beat these. I'm gonna cream them, cream it together for like three, four minutes. Then we got two eggs. It says to add each egg one at a time, whipping them completely before adding another. Work the sides down a little bit. This is already looking amazing. Now three tablespoons of molasses, which once you've opened a jar of molasses, you can never do it again. Three tablespoons of molasses. And then two tablespoons of dark corn syrup or golden syrup, which I was kind of looking for, but I could not find. So I just got some dark corn syrup. Now we're gonna beat that. So now I'm gonna start to slowly add in the flour in like three batches, essentially. Get that flour work worked in. Okay, so now we gotta puree that date mixture. Make sure it's hot, puree it, and then add this in. So now add your dates. And now we'll blend that. That is looking good. Everything seems to be mixed in well. It smells, oh. No big pieces of date, which I like to see. This is gonna be great. So now we're gonna make them into, in little muffin trays. So each one is sort of like, you know, an individual serving like that. And this is nonstick, but I like to just sort of grease and flour the insides just to be extra safe. So a little bit of butter and then a little bit of flour lightly coated in each one. I think I did that stupid, but nonetheless, I got done. I'm just gonna add my batter to this thing, which makes it kind of easy to pour. So we're gonna fill them up about two thirds of the way, no more than two thirds of the way, one half to two thirds of the way, because they're gonna rise a little bit. Thank you. 
Okay, all we gotta do is cook these for 18 to 20 minutes and then make the toffee sauce, which seems to be pretty easy. Oven's been preheating, so we can just pop these in and set a timer. Now we want to sort of air on the side of under baking them rather than over baking them. So we're just going to pull them until like a knife just comes clean after pulling it. We really want to kind of keep this nice and moist. Now to make the toffee sauce. So in a pot, we're just gonna add a half a cup of cream, quarter cup of butter, one tablespoon of molasses, two tablespoons of corn syrup. And two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Quarter cup of packed brown sugar. We're just gonna get this on the stove and bring it up to a boil and I think simmer it for like a minute or two, two, three minutes, and then it's done. Serve it hot. So you can just poke a hole with something. This is just a, a thermometer. You don't want it to be super wet. Like there's a little bit of crumb that's stuck to it, but that just tells me it's nice and moist. But the cake is cooked and that's just what you kind of want to see. Yeah, so we're just gonna kind of pick one we like. I'm gonna get one out of here. We're gonna plate it up. And you got your toffee sauce. It looks loose, but it's really hot. So once that hits a cool plate, that's gonna start to tighten up and it's gonna be the perfect consistency. I like to poke some holes so that the sauce can make its way in to the cake. I can't even begin to express how insanely good this is. Uh, the cake, it's moist and delicate and light. The sauce is gooey and caramelly and is the perfect consistency. Honestly, it's one of the best desserts I've ever had. Dude, look at that, done. The problem is those portions might not even be big enough. That's how good it is. So here's what's up. You can make this in a bunt pan, big pan. You can make it in a loaf tray. You can do it in the muffin chin. I'm gonna leave all that kind of stuff down in the recipe, different variations, stuff that these two people worked out. So you can just follow their instructions and uh, you should be good to go. And I'll link their websites and channels below. But this is up there, man. I'm, I'm not even kidding. It's not my recipe, so I'm not tooting my own horn. I really had been searching for a recipe that brings me back to that chateau sticky toffee pudding and this is it I promise you that's how you close out a holiday meal there it is last recipe and look at what's going on outside It's a winter wonderland out there. Starting to feel that holiday spirit. I'm winding down, headed on my vacation, and I'm gonna be sort of out of commission, refueling and recharging for a few weeks. So I just wanna thank you all. It's been an incredible year. If you wanna grab one of these Christmas time shirts, you still have time. You won't get it in time for Christmas, but you can still have it for future years. Holiday plan of attack is still ready to go. If you're not ready for the holidays by now, you're really never gonna be. So if you wanna get that, that's in the description as well. Probably gonna see you one more time before I head out. Do like a live stream or an announcement for who is gonna win that giveaway for my patrons and anyone who purchased the Plan of Attack. So keep a lookout for that. But other than that, that's all for me this year. I'll see you next year. Until then, take care of yourself, have the best holiday ever, and go feed yourself.